New beta files have finally dropped today, and with them we got info regarding the two new characters, Yao Yao and Al Haytham, both of them having Dendro typing. As a matter of fact, since Dendro is a relatively new element, it still lacked characters, so a double release like this makes a lot of sense. Today, I will elaborate on my first thoughts regarding Al Haytham, as I've already done some calculations about him, and it looks like he's a pretty interesting and flexible character. Starting from his kit, he's an on-field damage dealer, whose damage is almost entirely reliant on his elemental skill functions and elemental mastery scaling mechanics. In fact, when he uses his E, he generates objects called chisel-like mirrors, which give him dendro infusion and generate dendro attacks themselves whenever he hits opponents with normal, charged or plunge attacks, on a 1.6 seconds cooldown. Chisel-like mirrors damage is tied to stacks, which go up to 3, depending on how many mirrors are on field at a given time. On elemental skill activation, two mirrors will be created, while a third can be created after he uses a charged attack or a plunge attack, on a 12 seconds cooldown. As you can see, the more mirrors are on field, the smaller the damage of each of them will be, but cumulatively the more mirrors the better, also because their attacks count independently, meaning they are more impactful in terms of spread damage. In that regard, the mirror's elemental application should follow the standard internal cooldown rule. Each mirror lasts 4 seconds on the field. The elemental skill has a 18 seconds cooldown. When I said that his damage was entirely tied to his elemental skill, I truly meant that. In fact, his elemental burst is a multi-hit AoE dendro attack, whose hit count depends on how many mirrors are on field on its cast. The burst consumes the mirrors that are currently on field, generates the attack, and then recreates a quantity of mirrors that depends on how many were on field before its activation. Both his elemental skill and elemental burst are enhanced by his Ascension 4 passive, which buffs their damage depending on how much EM Al Haytham has. The elemental burst has a 18 cooldown and a 70 energy cost. Now that I went through his kit, I can start explaining what Al Haytham seems to be at the moment. In fact, while his damage output is entirely reliant to him being on field, Al Haytham doesn't necessarily seem to be a traditional main damage dealer, as he seems rather flexible in terms of usage. In fact, all of this depends on how you want to handle his elemental burst. Since a full stack burst won't leave you with any mirrors on field, and the only way to get that is by either using his elemental skill, or using a charged attack, so up to 3 per rotation in those ways, this means that a full stack burst usage won't leave you with any way to deal significant damage with Al Haytham after that, meaning his rotation would be at most, an elemental skill usage, some normal and charged attacks, and then his elemental burst within 4 seconds of his elemental skill activation, since that's how long the mirrors last. This type of field time aligns more with sub-DPS characters such as Yemiko, and categorizes him as more of a burst DPS than a main damage dealer. At the same time, you can spread the mirrors cast out more throughout the rotation, to stretch his damage window, but while diminishing his burst damage. I won't say which is the best among those at the moment, as that entirely depends on what the rest of the team looks like, and what would fit better in terms of field time, but by itself him being able to change his rotation duration without suffering from the typical detriments of that, seems really convenient and flexible, as it theoretically allows him to fit into any team structure. I have prepared a preliminary weapons comparison based on what's available at the moment, considering two different scenarios, one where he gets the most out of his elemental burst stacks, and the other where he uses his elemental burst with zero stacks, but in a stretched damage rotation for him. In terms of external buffs and other miscellaneous stuff, the only thing I accounted for here is Nahida's elemental mastery buff from her passive. Nothing else is accounted here, so don't take these damage numbers as conclusive or anything, as I just wanted to get a template to compare weapons first. Of course his signature weapon is the strongest for him, as it's a huge stat stick, while also having a strong passive for his kit. However, the difference compared to other options is not that big, since there are a lot of great swords in the game that are universally strong, so they fit well even with a character with unique damage scaling such as Al Haytham. Part of this is thanks to the fact that, despite scaling off EM, 
his attack scaling is still decently high, so high base attack weapons are not incredibly devalued. The burst DPS rotation penalizes weapons such as Mist Splitter and Black Sword, whose passives don't synergize perfectly with the types of attacks used or rotation structure as a whole. Meanwhile, in the stretched rotation scenario, where his role is more similar to a typical sustained DPS, Mist Splitter and Black Sword look better as their passives are more valuable there. His signature weapon is the one that gains the most from extended field time, since it significantly buffs every part of his kit. Still, overall he doesn't seem to be particularly reliant on his signature, as there are plenty of decent 5 stars options, and even free to play options such as Iron Sting that can be valuable. I'm done for today. Al Haytham seems an interesting and decently strong character, but everything is of course subjected to change and more in-depth calculations are needed to fully gauge his value, so expect many more videos to come on my channel. If you enjoyed this one, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time.